last section, we started looking at the concept of differentiation or finding the slope of a tangent to a curve. And we found that it's equal, we define average slope. Now we're going to start looking at, or we found the instantaneous slope by using a formula which we called f prime of x, which was the derivative. This part, we're going to do some more examples from first principles. So over here, I just want to say this is um, differentiation from first principles. In other words, finding the derivative from first principles, the derivative from first principles. Right. Finding the slope, finding the gradient, finding the slope of the tangent at a point on a curve. Let us ask ourselves the question then, what if, this is an example again, what if f of x over here is equal to this? x squared plus 2x, x squared plus 2x minus 3. What is the slope? And the question is, what is the slope at x equals 0? Or any other number, who cares? We just want to go through the principles and they say, Use first principles. What do I do? Well, you can use my method or you can do a huge numerator. I like to say, all right, what is f of x? I do it the other way, just for a change. f of x, I write that first, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Then let's calc f of x plus h. That is going to be, maybe this way works better for you. Correct? Now I go and I work this out. This is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3. Then I say I am looking for f prime of x which is first principles equal to the limit as h tends to naught of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, I prefer to do it this way. I prefer to do my f of x plus h minus f of x over here. So I say that's going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now we remove the brackets and that becomes, let me just move it up slightly. Very irritating when it does that. So we move it up slightly and I'm going to simplify that is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now you take your green cancelling pen. Look. 2x, 2x. 3 minus 3 plus 3. So we now have shortened this to basically being 2xh plus h squared plus 2h. Everything else is gone. So I can say thus, this is the limit as h tends to 0. This whole thing on top there is actually that, isn't it? 2xh plus h squared plus 2h all divided by h. What did we say? We then we factorize. Generally, every time you're going to factorize these. And remember, you must write this limit all the way down. What factor I can take h out and that's going to be 2x plus h plus 2 all over h. Okie dokie. Here we go and we say this is the limit as h tends to 0. The h cancels out of 2x plus h plus 2 which is now I can put h in a 0. 
which is equal to 2x plus 2. I have done this job now. Here, we let h equal 0. Why? Because it's legal. I was going to say, oh, come on, let's say it. Because we can. We actually can here. Because we're not defying any mathematical laws. We are just saying, I can let h equal to 0 at that point. Thus, the slope of the line, okay, let's just reiterate. Thus, the slope or gradient of the tangent to f of x equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 at any point is equal to f prime of x which is equal to 2x plus 2 and now we said therefore therefore at x equals 0 the m of the tangent is equal to 2 times 0 plus 2 which is equal to 2 and let's see what is the equation of the tangent the equation of the tangent I am now working with a tangent I always split it because the normal is coming you work with the tangent the normal or the normal and then the tangent that's critical to split them so that we don't get confused between the left and the right brain or the left and the right eye it happens really it does it happens a lot so if you know you're working with the tangent we're focused on a tangent line if we know we're working with a normal we know we are at the orthogonal 90 degrees we're going to get to that as well the equation of the tangent is always a straight line y equals mx plus c m i know y is equal to 2x plus c how do i find the rest what have i not done yet i haven't find the coords of the contact point it, it is where x equals naught therefore f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 therefore f of naught in other words I'm just working out the y is going to be naught squared plus 2 times naught minus 3 is minus 3 therefore contact point is equal to 0 and minus 3 da da well we kind of knew that didn't we okay but doesn't matter because in this case you can see it in some you can't so what do I say I say okay that's my contact so therefore I now know that I can substitute therefore minus 3 must be equal to 2 times 0 plus c therefore c must be minus 3 therefore the equation is y is equal to 2x minus 3 that's as simple as it is 2x minus 3 that's the equation of a line that is tangent to this at the point x equals 0. I've got y equal to um, minus 3. And I'm saying that the tangent line here, y is equal to 2x minus 3. And you can see just as a hint, we are going to be looking at the normal soon let us do another slightly more complex one which might not look as straightforward as at first we're going to kind of do the same thing i say find f prime of x this is another example find f prime of x derivative of of y equal to 1 over x now what do I know? I know that y, that is the same thing as saying f of x is 1 over x. How do we do it? First of all, what is f of x plus h? 
That is going to be 1 over x plus h. f of x, I write underneath it, is 1 over x. Then I go and I say, okie dokie. Then what is f of x plus h minus f of x? I know this is boring, eh? 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. Okay, now what? Where do we go from here? Remember when we did um, fairly complicated fractions, plussing and minusing them? What did I say at the time? I said, when a, a, an arithmetic expression says plus, minus, divide times, do it. They are telling you actually what to do. So let us say, okay, then, then let's take them apart. This is x plus h times x. This is my LCD, is it not? Then I said, right, I write down what's on top, and x plus h divides in the denominator, leaving us with an x. Minus x1, that's the 1 coming down, remember? Whatever is on top there comes down. Times x minus 1 times x, just wait for it to finish auto-saving, x plus h over there. Oh, it's fine. X plus H. Which gives us X minus X minus H over X plus H times X. Which gives us, hang on, my, that's minus H over X plus H times X. My next thing is then to say, right, I am being asked if prime of X f prime of x is equal to, and I write this down, limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You're probably going to get a mark for doing that. So I then say, right, remembering that I have to write this darn thing out the whole time, I've actually simplified it so I can say this is minus h over x plus h times x all divided by h. Here's the next little trick, obviously. This is the limit, as h tends to 0, of minus h over x plus h times x multiplied by 1 over h. Same thing, isn't it? Have a look. We're getting a cancel here. Which is then the limit, as h tends to 0, of minus 1 over x plus h times x. Now you ask, can, can we now substitute h equals naught? Yes, we can. Why can we? Well, straightforward. Because this is, if I put naught, it's minus 1 over x plus 0 times x, which is minus 1 over x squared. And that is the slope of the tangent at any point x. Cool. So, what can't x be? Remember here, I've got an x underneath, and we would say x cannot be equal to 0 for obvious reasons, because I can't substitute a 0. But if it was 1, it would be minus 1, etc., etc. All, it is a bit repetitive, it is a little bit messy, okay, I understand. What if we got asked to do this? I've got here, find the slope of the tangent to, just let me make a note, that it's an example. My example here is f of x equal to 16 minus x squared all over x plus 4. Okay, now, once we're getting to things that look like this, your first rule is you're going to simply if we can and you always will be able to so we say f of x is equal to 
16 is going to be 4 minus x times 4 plus x, all over x plus 4. Hallelujah. Take out the green pen. There we go. Which gives us at the end of the day, f of x equal to 4 minus x. Now I use the normal straightforward method. Use normal method. I say f of x plus h is equal to 4 minus x plus h. Look at the brackets. f of x is equal to 4 minus x. Therefore, f of x plus h minus f of x is going to be 4 minus x minus h minus 4 plus x, which is going to be equal to minus h. I think we've got that sorted. Have we not? So that's going to be equal to minus h. So far, so good. I think so. What's my next step? The next step is then I say f prime of x must be equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I put it, this is the limit as h tends to 0 of minus h over h, which is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 1, which is minus 1. All right. But now let's just have a look. What is f of x? I don't need to take that up. Hang on. f of x was equal to 4 minus x, which is minus x plus 4, okay, because this is mx plus c. So therefore, m is equal to minus 1, is it not? And there, you've just proved it. It's minus 1. It's the same slope. That's what we do. Now, if we were asked the normals, the tangents, we would just go ahead and we would do that. I want to, I did one, uh, um, just wanted to go a little bit further back where I just did one prior to that. Um, where we had a, a quite, yeah, what if they tell us, um, what if they give us this? This is another example. Example, let us say they say f of x is equal to 3x to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus x minus 5. And they want us to find the f prime of that. First one you're going to simplify. How do I simplify that? Divide through by denominator. So therefore f of x now becomes 3x squared over 2x, 3x to the fifth, sorry, minus 2x cubed over 2x plus x over 2x minus 5 over 2x. And this leaves me with 3 over 2x to the 4th minus 2, sorry, minus just x, minus just 2 cancels with the 2, x squared, plus x there, 1 over 2, minus 5 over 2x. Then we're going to do it with that. I'm not going to do that. You're not going to get one like that. It just becomes too messy. It's, it's not... Yeah, it's not pleasant if you get ones like that. And I doubt that you will. Moving along, as they say, swiftly now. Now, we have a notation for all of this. Let us look at notation for differentiation. I'm not going to write that down. Notation. You have seen me write f of x. This is a function. Equals to a function, right? This is my function there. It's got x's or oh, other numbers. Could be f of y and I could have y's in there. So what do I say? That's the function. So what's the derivative? The derivative is written f dash of x equal to that. f prime. And we say this is f prime of x if x is in the bracket. 
Next, I could have y equal to some function. How do I do the derivative here? I do the derivative in the following way. I say to myself the derivative is here is dy by dx. We say dy by dx is equal to, and then we write the derivative down. And here is, we write the derivative down. There are other notations which are used as well. And another notation is this one. They could say d of x of a function again. There you just basically write the derivative. Because d of x means differentiate with respect to x. That's what it means. The last one we could have is where they say d by dx of a function. It means differentiate it with respect to x. It means differentiate with respect to x. That. Same there. It means differentiate with respect to x. And basically you just write the function. You just write the function down, the derivative. You would say it equals something, you would go off and do it. Okay, now right at the beginning I said, let's not get our knickers in a twist about this because there is a recipe. Yay! There's a recipe to follow. Okay, this is all in your textbooks, I'm sure, but I'm just going to go through it. If f of x is equal to ax to the n. Oh my goodness, here he goes again. Axn. What am I talking about? A and N are numbers. A and N are numbers. Like A could be equal to 5. X could be equal to 3. Oh, sorry, N could be equal to 3. Oops. I'm thinking of the curve. Uh, N could be equal to 3. Which means that would be 5X to the 3. Can you see? 5 x to the 3. A is the constant. It is the coefficient. This is the coefficient of x to the n. n is the order. Remember that? That's quite a long, long way back in most people's lives, isn't it? You can hardly remember it. It's the order of the polynomial. In this case, it's order 3. It's a cubic. Now, I'm going to say, okay, so therefore, the derivative, and I'm going to write it in red, f prime of x is equal to a in brackets multiplied by n to the power of x to the n minus 1. That is the recipe for that. We are going to do quite a lot of these, so don't, 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 don't worry yet. Just get this down so that we can work from it. In the next section, we're going to start using these. I might do one or two in this. Who knows? So we say f prime of x. Now f prime, I'm sorry, f of x. I just want to go back. All right. Let's just say, what if f of x is equal to 3x to the power of 3? The recipe says if, let me write it in red, just to keep it straight, f prime of x is equal to, that's a, that's n. So a is 3 in brackets, n must be in front now, x to the n minus 1, which is going to be 9x to the power of 2. Yes, I can take f double dash. Second derivative, third derivative. I can just keep on going. Okay. As long as it makes sense. Okay. Very often it doesn't make sense. When you start getting to higher orders, it's difficult to conceptualize what you're talking about actually. That's when you start entering the realm of pure maths and, and, and you're in spaces and, and, and things like that. We're not even going to go there at this point. Right? Let's leave that to, to, to those guys who want to. 
So we've nine x squared is that. What if I said, all right, let's do another one then. Um, f of x was equal to um, one third x to the power of a half. Okay, I'm going to then say, okie dokes, let's just check a and n. So f prime of x is equal to a is one third in brackets. n is, comes down to the front a half to the power of x to the one half minus one. n minus one. Which leads me to one over six times x to the minus a half. We don't have a negative exponent. 1 over 6x to the power of a half. If you're a purist, or rather x6 root x. Because x to the half is the square root of x. Yep, we're going to need to know all of those things as well. The next bit of this is if we've got, if we've got over here, um, f of x is a constant. If f of x equals a constant, okay, what is f prime of x? f prime of x is equal to 0. Let me explain why. Very simply, let us say f of x is equal to 2. Right. So I then say y equals 2. This is the line y equals 2. This here we said was the slope of the tangent, correct? What is the slope of the line that abuts that? It is zero. The slope of that is equal to naught. Yeah. Slope zero. Therefore, we kind of proved that just by looking at it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. the, um, the next one is what if we had a, um, a scenario like this? We said to ourselves, what about, and I've said here, y equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. And they want us to find the derivative, in this case, is dy by dx. You don't change that. If you start with f of x, you go to f prime of x. If you start with y, you go to dy by dx. Differentiate with respect to x. That is the variable that's being differentiated upon. Now, here we go. What do I do? It's quite simple. What you do is you say your dy by dx is d by dx, the derivative of x squared, plus the derivative of 2x minus d by dx of, my, of plus 3, right? In other words, you just sum or difference of them. That's all you do. You take the sum or the difference of the thingies. Can you see here? This is a sum and this is a difference. So the final answer here is going to be 1, which is the coefficient, we don't write that. I'm only doing it because it's early days, times n, which is the 2, x to the 2 minus 1. Plus, this is going to be 1, I was already 2 times 1, because it's x to the 1, and x to the 1 minus 1, minus the derivative of a constant is 0. That's going to be 2x. What is this? It's going to be plus 2 times x to the 0, which is 2x plus 2, because x to the 0 is 1. And that brings us to the end of that piece. I'm going to do some, uh, some more complicated examples where we've got powers and exponents in, 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 in rather odd minus 3 quarters and things, but the methodology remains the same. You will see the recipe remains the same. I would strongly, very strongly advocate that what you do is you write f of x down and then you bring, you put your constant in brackets, you bring the exponent down in brackets, you put the x and then you put your old exponent and minus 1 from it. It just makes it belt and braces so that you don't forget something or get a sign change. 
which makes it go very wrong. So we're going to come back and we're going to carry on and we're going to do some more examples. Then we're going to start looking at applications of these as well. I shall return as fast as possible. Cheers, have a good one. Welcome to calculus. It's a really, really great subject. It, it's so powerful. I can't even begin to describe how incredible this part of maths is. Cheers. Bye.